Hi guys, today we're talking about light, reflection, refraction, and the thin converging lens. Mirrors are used in everyday life. In the top picture, you can see an example of a mirror being prepared for a scientific experiment. In the bottom picture, you can see a mirror that was used in an art exhibition. Now, not all surfaces can be used as mirrors because most surfaces are actually very, very rough when you look closely at them. And what happens is the the light will come down and it will scatter off in all different directions and that's not a good property for a mirror. We want the light to all come off and, and scatter off in the same direction or move off in the same direction. Now the first law that we need to understand is the reflection law. And here on the right hand side you can see I've got an example of a mirror here. This side is the mirror side, this side is the, the rough side or the back of the mirror. Light rays are coming in, striking the mirror and bouncing off. The light ray that's coming in here, that's called the ray of incidence. The light ray that's coming off, so it's going off in this direction, is called the, the ray of reflection. This angle here is called the angle of incidence. And then the angle coming off from the normal line is called the angle of reflection. And this is the angle that the, the ray of light makes with the normal line. So here, this is our angle with the, the angle of incidence, and here this is our angle of reflection. And the reflection law states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Now in the photograph on the left hand side, the baby is looking at an image of himself. Now this image is what we call a virtual image. Now a virtual image, it, it means it can't be projected onto a screen. Now here we've got our mirror, this time it's horizontal. The object here is at A, and the, the light, light's coming off in all different directions. Some of the light will hit the mirror and be reflected into the observer's eye, but it looks like, if the, from the observer's point of view, the light actually came from over here. So because the light is coming down from here, coming up from here, from the observer's point of view, it actually appears like it's come from here. So a virtual image... So a virtual image cannot be projected onto a screen. And the, the image, the distance from the object to the mirror, is equal to the distance from the image to the mirror. So this is your object here. This is your image. So the distance here is the same as the distance here. Okay, next up we're talking about refraction. Now refraction occurs when light moves from one medium to another. And what happens is the light is bent. So here you can see a picture of a, a straw inside a glass and it appears like the actual straw is bent. But what has happened is the light coming from the, the straw passes through the liquid, 
from the liquid to the air and as it does so it changes direction. And here we can see on the right a different uh, diagram of refraction. In this case we're, we're going from a material that's optically less dense to something that's optically more dense. And as the light passes through, again we've got our normal line here. Uh, the normal line, remember, it's 90 degrees to the boundary. So here's our uh, interface the, where the two materials meet. The light comes in, and if um, the material it's going into is more dense than the material it's leaving, the light will bend towards the normal and you can see the angle here is bigger than the angle here. So why does refraction happen? Well here the red lines are representing the wave front of the light as it's coming in. So this is maybe the peaks of the waves as they're coming in. And what happens as the light moves from one material to another material, if it's forced to slow down, the wavelengths themselves become smaller and the light bends towards the normal. And if you think about the equation uh, V equals F times lambda, if the wave speed is reduced, uh, the wavelength is also reduced as long as our frequency remains the same. Now in order to do some calculations with refraction, we need to understand something called refractive index. A refractive index is a quantity that describes how light slows down as it passes into a different material. And there's an equation to calculate refractive index, and the equation is this. The refractive index is equal to the speed of light uh, in a vacuum. divided by the speed of light in your material. Now there's a law that relates the size of the angle of incidence with the size of the angle of refraction and it's called Snell's Law. And you can use it to calculate one of these uh, unknowns if you know the other two. So if you know the refractive index and the angle of refraction you can work out the angle of incidence etc using the equation. Now the equation is this N which is the refractive index of the material that the light is going into is equal to sine the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction. Now here you can see three different phenomena that happen when light goes from a material that's got a higher optical density to a material that's got a lower optical density. In the first example here, we can just see normal refraction is occurring. So this side must be optically less dense because the angle of refraction is larger than the angle of incidence. In this situation here, the light moves along the, the boundary. At this critical angle here, the light doesn't pass through into the material. Uh, it goes along the, the boundary of the material. And if the angle here becomes greater than the critical angle, we get something called total internal reflection, where the light, instead of passing through the material, actually gets bent internally. Uh, and this effect is called total internal reflection. OK, next I want to talk about the thin converging lens. Now here you can see lines of parallel light entering the lens and they, they pass through and they end up here at this point here and that's called the focal point. And the distance from the lens to the focal point is called the focal length. Okay, next I'm going to show you some ray diagrams involving lenses. So here's our lens here, and then this line here is called our principal axis. Now we're going to imagine we've got a, a focal point with a distance of maybe 5 centimeters. So we'll have a point there, and then the same point on the other in the other direction. Now if we imagine we've got an object here, 
Now, light is going to come off this object in all different directions. But some of that light is going to go parallel with the principal axis. And if it's going parallel, we know it's going to end up going through the focal point. Also, some light will pass through the center of the lens. And when it passes through the center of the lens, it actually goes straight. And the reason it goes straight is because if you look here, effectively you've got a, a flat piece of glass, so the light will just pass straight through. Now if you work backwards, we would see, okay, where would it appear like this light has come from? So if you work backwards, and let's have a look here. Now where the lines meet, would uh, actually see our image. So this here is our object. And uh, this is our image. And as you can see, the image, this has caused magnification. So when the object is closer than the focal point, the image becomes magnified. And it's important to note that the image is a virtual image. It can't be projected on a screen. Okay, next up we're going to have a look at what happens when our uh, object is further away than the focal point. So this time, uh, I've put my little focal point on either side at uh, three centimeters, and now I'm just going to put my, uh, my object, which I'm going to again do my little arrow, uh, that's going to be at uh, about seven centimeters. So again, light is coming off our object in all different directions, but some of that light uh, is going to go uh, parallel. So again, some of the light is going to go parallel with the principal axis, and we know that that light is going to pass through the focal point at the other end. And again, like previously, some light is going to pass through the very center of the lens, and as that light goes through the center, it's going to go straight. And here, you can see on the right-hand side, where the beams cross, uh, we are going to get our image. So this time our object is here and our image is here. Now this image uh, has been inverted and it can also be projected on a screen so it's a real image. So just to recap, when the object is further than the focal point, the image that we get on the other side here, well that image is real and inverted. Okay, finally I want to talk about something called the dispersion of light. So this object here is called a prism, and when white light passes through, uh, you get the full spectrum of colour coming off. And the reason why you get a full spectrum is because the refractive index for different colours is actually different. So the angle of refraction as the light passes through is slightly different so therefore the light of different colors comes off at different angles so just to recap when white light as uh, so a white light is made up of all different colors and then different colors are refracted at different angles so that's why the spectrum is produced